Mm, it's good to be here. It is important, of course, to have an awareness of what here is and why we're here. There are many levels of experience, many levels of being. And in these different levels of being, there are opportunities to allow the consciousness to attune to the highest vibration and level of beingness. Beingness on earth has implied being human. And there is that part of our hereditary, and the influences that we have. And beingness, of course, also involves divine beingness. And there is that which comes from the realm of what we call the divine, and that which is taken for granted as life. Life, of course, springs from a level which isn't fully understood. Mankind takes for granted that life just is. Beingness is all of these things. It's being in life. It's being in the realm where life extends from. And being in the realm which we call Earth, where life is revealed. Identity, of course, is tied into where one's beingness lies, where one's awareness of beingness is. For the most part, we've been brought into a culture of humanness, with the intent of being part of this human experience. But beingness extends much more than just being human. It includes being human but it includes also being being. So what is being? If one looks at the life force of all things, that's being. It's revealed in whatever we see. Being is revealed in trees and plants and creatures and in planets and systems. That's all part of what is seen, being though, beingness, isn't necessarily seen except by reason of the fact that there's something to be seen. If one thinks about the atmosphere of the earth, without an atmosphere we wouldn't see too much. If we go out into space where there is no atmosphere, it's hard to see what's there. And yet there's a lot over there in the depth of space. But because there is no atmosphere, there is no way of seeing and experiencing what's being there. So we need an atmosphere for being and beingness to be revealed. Not just an earthly atmosphere, but a divine atmosphere, a spiritual substance we call it. Pneumoplasm, the spirit substance. The more pneumoplasm, the more spiritual atmosphere we develop, individually speaking, the more is able to come through from the realm of beingness. But the more the identity is of beingness. We start out being human, and in the womb we use the atmosphere of the mother's womb. The mother provides the womb. As one grows up and is a child, we experience the parents perhaps providing some sort of womb, some sort of atmosphere to be in. The atmosphere, of course, goes to a certain point with parents, and then we have to experience our own atmosphere. There's the quest for the meaning of life, the desire to move on one's own and establish something of our own. In some cases, people don't always move out right away. They live with their parents. And in their original divine design, 
when lifespans used to be four to six thousand years in the motherland people used to live with their parents for some 200 years or more before they decided to go out and establish their own atmosphere find out for themselves what that atmosphere is all about an atmosphere in the substance of atmosphere takes time to develop so people move on their own they try out all different experiences they try out all sorts of different relationships and in the process they come to their own conclusion of what it is they want to experience and the more that they want to experience something the more they develop an atmosphere for what they experience some people choose to experience well there's all sorts of things there are an unlimited number of possibilities of what one can experience and there are realms which are calling forth to mankind to experience and have been calling for for thousands of years that mankind hasn't fully even begun to experience we've only barely scratched the scratch of the scratch in the experience of what beingness is to be here to allow the not only the vibration but the full um, extent of our beingness our spirit the truth of who we really are as individuals as divine beings to be revealed it has to be the desire to create something of an atmosphere to develop something of a atmosphere before that it gets developed if there is no desire to develop that atmosphere in whatever range some people like to develop business atmospheres some people like to de develop home atmospheres some people go for well there's an unlimited number of types of atmospheres people can develop but the particular as atmosphere we're looking at is an atmosphere where the full capacity of the in angelic being that you are that each one is can come forth this of course is possible people have translated it into somehow religion and religion to some extent has learned how to develop to develop a particular quality of atmosphere a religious atmosphere a spiritual atmosphere this atmosphere if you go to any temple or synagogue or uh, you'll experience the atmosphere that was developed around holiness or sacredness this atmosphere also can be and have the experience of those who develop it imbued into the very substance of it so if we develop an atmosphere of sacredness then in churches and synagogues and temples and all the rest there's a atmosphere of sacredness by whatever name people experience that and all too often that sacredness puts the experience of sacredness just into the atmosphere of that particular building so people go for their experience of the atmosphere of spirituality or religion or worship to a building sometimes and then the rest of the week they are out of that experience unless they stay there permanently and and develop it permanently and some people do but the atmosphere of beingness doesn't need a building it's developed by reason of the individual substance and the focus of substance the focus of intent the focus of consciousness the focus of whatever the person is choosing to experience at the base of it has to be the desire to experience something more by this age in our lives we've most of us come to the conclusion that there's an experience that we want to experience more of that experiences beyond just the day-to-day -day state of life but it includes the day-to-day -day state of life 
because we don't choose to go and live in a cave somewhere. But the desire is nevertheless there. There's a compulsion that people reach, almost everybody has it in them. Most people develop it through their childhood and by 21 start to seek the meaning of life. If they don't experience it by then, it could be that their atmosphere for that desire just hasn't um, perked up to the surface yet. When people go through challenging times, that's when they start to feel that desire perk up. The questions come up in the mind and the heart. What is the meaning of life? What are we doing here? There are all sorts of questions that need to be answered. And in that, the desire to establish an atmosphere, to study something, to learn something, to experience something, is developed. And one can take a thousand different spiritual books and have a thousand different experiences, all bordering on the experience of beingness, all coming close to what the truth of that can be in different ways. Some of them get stuck in certain ways though. So people experience and try out different things just for the sake of trying to understand what someone else may know. Ultimately, the responsibility always comes down to the individual to develop their own substance, to develop their own passion, their own desire for what they seek, their own uh, atmosphere of sacredness and worship and spirituality that will eventually lead to the experience of beingness. These are transitory experiences. Without the development of uh, sacredness, of worship, of love for God, love for the Creator, Allah, Krishna, whatever Buddha, whatever name one chooses, without that beginning step there is no development of the particular atmosphere whereby individual beingness can be revealed. It's not about dogma. It's not about one particular religion being better than the other or anything like that. It's about the experience of the atmosphere that the individual can experience. And by the atmosphere, by the substance that you seek, by what you put your heart and your mind and your intent into, and that's the direction of the substance of your experience, of everybody's experience. People make all sorts of things their God. People make all sorts of experiences their, their goal in life. And for some people, it's not enough just to experience it as a goal. The depth of desire starts to come to the surface where the union, the full capacity for union is felt and known and, and uh, revealed. Of course, the revelation and awareness of revelation is by what we see, by what, we, what goes on in body and mind and heart, and the atmosphere that's developed through the experiences that we go through. People develop atmosphere and that atmosphere can be of a very refined nature, um, a very high vibrational quality. One can feel the atmosphere in one's hands very easily around the fingertips. There's an atmosphere because that's what develops among the first things is the atmosphere around the hands. It starts to fill in so that the hands can start looking after the rest of the house of being, which is our body and mind and heart. And also the place that we live in, the particular quality of life that we experience. People, of course, have been experiencing challenges in life, and they put it down to one thing or another. And sometimes when the challenges of life overwhelm a person, they become so focused on the challenges of life, making money, experiencing relationships, all the different things that go on, 
have to forget about the spiritual atmosphere being developed. It becomes secondary or lower down on the list somehow. And as long as the spiritual substance, the experience of the union of beingness and full revelation of individual beingness is not at the top of the list, it'll never be developed. People only develop that substance when they first go. <coughs> Their first love is that. The full desire and longing for the experience of that. We know some of the experiences of passion for things, passion and desire for relationships or things in the world. And to the extent that there's passion, to the extent that there's desire, that's the direction to which the heart will go in developing substance. Substance is, of course, very much uh, 360 degree of form. <coughs> we can look at anything and develop passion around anything. Passion around woodworking, passion around um, cars, passion around relationships, passion around anything. But the first passion for those who truly want the union, want to experience the full union, needs to be for the passion of the divine experience of oneness. Oneness between what we call heaven and earth, between beingness, between being and human, between beingness, the experience of beingness, and humanness. Somewhere in the mix is that union. And the more one desires it, the more it's part of the compulsion that comes up from the inner realm, the more one chooses that, the more one will go towards that. It's almost magnetic. If one chooses that and it becomes the first love, the first thing that we want to experience, then all the other things become secondary or lower down on the list themselves. So what is the passion? What is the core of the experience of passion that you desire, that you want. In India, we have temples, and on the outer walls of the temples are voluptuous men and women engaged in sex and copulation and everything else. And then there's the door into the temple. And the main reason the experience is to experience and go including but going beyond the experience of relationships and sex and everything else as being the major part of the experience of life. One has to enter the temple. One has to have experienced those things and found that there's still something more that wants to be experienced. And then one enters a temple experience doesn't have to give up those things because they're part of the temple wall experience. They become part of the temple, but they're not the core inner sanctum of the temple. There's the courtyard of the temple. You might experience things and people all the time enter into a temple experience and hang around in the courtyard because that's where the desire is to commune with others who are hanging around in the courtyard. They get together once a week perhaps, so they experience something in the courtyard from time to time and they're happy with that. But then for those that seek to go into the temple, there are further and deeper experiences still, where one can enter into the temple itself into a holy place. And in the holy place, there's that sense of sacredness. And people develop their desire to experience the holy place. They can experience the holy place, sacredness and worship through all sorts of ways of experiencing sacredness and worship. 
there are those who become part of the priesthood. They spend their time and are temple workers. Their experience is just to serve in the temple. And a lot of the experience of religion and sacredness goes into such levels. But then there is an inner place beyond that also, a holy of holies, a place where one can experience God itself, oneness, and the desire has to be for that full experience. Beyond all the other desires, health and wealth and family and relationships and everything else, one has to have in the deepest desire to enter into the holy of holies, in the inner sanctum where the union can take place. Of course, this isn't talking about a building. This is, in more practical terms, the holy of holies that one experiences in one's own body and mind and heart. And the tabernacle of God is meant to be revealed in mankind, in men and women who reveal that holy of holies in themselves. The place, the substance, the atmosphere whereby God can be revealed as one with humanness. So beingness, divineness can be revealed. But before it can be revealed on an outer level, it has to be experienced on the inner level, in the inner plane. That movement towards the full goal of the experience is that which drives some and holy men and holy women, teachers and gurus and saints and prophets from time, they all desire the same experience. They all long for it. And anybody who longed for it would go towards that, would develop the atmosphere for that. One can experience all the things in the world. One can experience everything in the world. But one can only experience the thing that one loves primarily and first as the first thing. All other things start to pale in comparison to the first thing, to the first love. When people make their first love something else, then everything else pales in comparison to whatever they've made their first love. So also, with the desire and the first love for the union, the full union of heaven and earth, the experience of nirvana, the experience of all the different spiritual places that people think of as the experience of that, the highest. And there is, in that sense, glory that's given to God in the highest. Because when a person goes towards that experience and they long for it sufficiently, then they will experience that. And they will feel it, they'll know it for themselves. The knowing has to come from within. No one can tell you that you're experiencing it or not experiencing it. You know for yourself what your first love is. Everybody does. You know what you experience and where the things are that come up that take you from that desire for the first love, the passion for that first and highest experience. One can begin to look at what that experience is. But the ultimate thing is for each one to experience it, each one who longs for that to experience it for themselves. There's no one else who can take anyone on the, through that experience. We can describe it in some fashion, because if that's what the passion is in our own heart, then that's what we're experiencing as our first love. Then we can assist others to likewise share in beginning to know what our first love is. And the first love can be for the experience of eternity. Because that's where beingness is. 
It's an eternal experience. It's beyond the four score and ten, uh, you know, ninety, a hundred years or whatever that people live. It's an experience of every single moment of eternity. And the knowing of the oneness that comes in that, that goes beyond all the challenges because even challenges in an earthly level can only reach so far. Finance and money and laws and systems, they are only experienced at a very low level of mankind's experience. Once death comes upon the uh, individual, all those things are forgotten about. All those things are left behind. There is nothing of the experience that we conceive of as of day-to-day -day life that we can take into the next level, into the experience of union. Because these things are, in a sense, all created by the mind. And the mind seeks to experience and thinks that it can experience something very high by reason of the mind. But the mind gets caught in the range of just mind substance, believing perhaps. But the real substance that needs to be developed is heart substance. But people translate heart substance sometimes into a commonly used word, love. They think that they just want love and everything is love. But they forget that it's more than just love, it's passion for the very experience of the oneness of the Creator. Knowing that for oneself is beyond love. It's beyond anything that one can describe by the word love. It's the passion. It's more towards the realm of lust Sometimes people think of lust and think it's a bad word, like we shouldn't lust for something. But people have all sorts of lusts. People lust after different things. It's beyond love in that way. One might say that the body of love is lust. If one wants something, one lusts after it. To fully long for the experience of nirvana, of heaven, of the bliss, of the oneness, and has to lust for it. And in that lust, one wouldn't accept anything less than the experience. People can come along and have their own experience, but the lust, the desire, that full, full-on passion will take the individual straight to the heart of the Creator, to the heart of the experience of oneness. Krishna was experiencing, was expressing this to Arjuna as they were traveling along in the chariot. That, that, that desire would draw people to the full experience. See, Arjuna was and is the spiritual aspect of each one that can experience and knows what it wants. It only wants to travel around in the experience with Krishna, with God. Letting Krishna be the chariot driver of all life's experiences. So in day-to-day -day life, when we have experiences, every single thing, you can look at it this way, every single thing that you experience is by reason of Krishna's taking you through that experience, God taking you through that experience. Every single thing every single thing because you're in the chariot individually speaking with God. Your desire will take you through all the different challenges of day-to-day -day life and you will learn, you will be instructed from Krishna what that experience is, how to deal with the experience, how to deal with it successfully because after all, each one who is to experience the experience of being with God comes to the realm of first experiencing God 
in every single moment of day-to-day -day life. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation, be it challenges, be it joys, be it everything, it's all part of the experience that you experience as you walk with God, as you move through your day-to-day -day life experience with Krishna, with the being part of you, which is God, which is the Creator. The divineness part of you is the Creator. It's the part that is the Creator in all people. The Creator exists in all people and in all things, and subsequently it exists in you. It exists in everyone, because without that spark of the life force, there is no life. But one has to desire and build an atmosphere of lust for that union, for that experience, no matter what's going on. And see, as Arjuna did, that when he went through the experiences, yeah, there were challenges. He was instructed to kill certain parts of the experience that he thought were his nephews and those lower nature things. He didn't want to. He was detesting the possibility of killing off those lower parts of himself, bemoaning that they were his relatives and how could he do that? And still the instruction was to deal with those things one has to kill off the lower nature parts. Quite often in some cultures, in the Christian culture primarily, there's the whole idea of turning down the cheek. And in some sense, maybe that is successfully part of their culture. And people experience day-to-day -day life turning down the cheek, but they hardly experience walking with God and the strength of knowing the experience of what they go through. One has to be able to be strong in the experience, in the passion, in the lust, in the desire to walk with God in day-to-day -day life, to experience the full union. Because then one day one finds that there is no differentiation between uh, the human and the being. It's one. Justice. And the experience then, the revelation becomes for the individual, the realization, I am that. One could say to some extent that that's the goal, but even that would be uh, putting it into a lower level. The oneness after all is the truth is you are one with God already. Without the Creator is nothing me that is me. Your birthright is the same birthright of all people, of all creatures, of all that is all, which is to merge into oneness. All the experiences you and everybody else have been going through are just beginning parts of the experience that call up and draw forth from you what is your desire what is the passion in your heart see that's what the creator is calling forth from each one what do you long for more than anything else in the creator uh, Krishna, God, Allah all know it's the same answer union This is the highest thing that can be experienced, union with the Creator. Anything less belief in all, are, they pale in comparison. And they all come to naught anyway. There's nothing that one can achieve in the world. Even Solomon realized that with all his wealth and women and riches and and all the glory that came his way from all of the empires. In the end he realized it was all vanity. He realized
realized that it was all vanity. It was all in vain. When people come to the end of their life and find to a large extent that it was all in vain, because they miss the opportunity for union with the first love, with that which truly is worthwhile. And we can experience that in every single experience of daily life. While we're eating, while we're cooking, while we're interacting with friends and family, all the things that we do, there's not one experience that one goes through that is not experienced by the human part that is also subsequently, one can say, God is not here. There's not one experience that you go through that you can separate out God from, that you can separate out the Creator from. The Creator, after all, knows everything that you go through, all your heart's desires. Manifests in reality whatever it is that you're choosing. That's why people sometimes they choose to manifest certain things and they long to manifest riches or power or finances or other things, relationships and things, they manifest it because the Creator is offering them the chance to experience all the things. But for those who long for, and there are very few who enter into the inner sanctum of the holy of holy place, no long for, to those very, very special ones, to those who have been, whose substance has been refined from their parents and their grandparents, because through their parents, through their grandparents, through their great-grandparents, through all the generations of their civilization, it has come up through them. There are those on earth who through all the generations of their four fathers and four parents and ancestors, the desire for union with God has come to the surface and not just an idea, because an idea will not suffice. Not just a belief, because a belief is still such a low level experience. It does that pales in comparison to the real experience of union. To the first love that you hold. It's part of the first love that your parents probably also held, but maybe they didn't and weren't able to get to that point. So they've passed the baton, passed that substance on through you, and that desires to go even higher into the union, higher into the experience of union with the highest. It's very often and commonly spoken of as glory to God in the highest. The experience of the highest experience of God deserves glory because all of the substance through parents and grandparents has come up to have that experience through you, through all those on earth, through all those on earth who long for that. And everyone's put to the test. You know, Arjuna drove around in the chariot with Krishna and came upon different circumstances and situations. It's the day-to-day -day travel of life. In the day-to-day -day travel of life, it's just that experience of being moment by moment knowing that God is with you taking you through every single day-to-day -day challenge that can get you through the challenge. Knowing that even in this challenge, even in this circumstance, even in this joy, there's something that needs to be experienced and there needs to be a victory over. This is the path of victory. Victory over all the lower experiences. 
Some people put this off till the point of death, and then they've got a very short three days to go through it. And some never do. Even at that point, they come back into rebirth instead of ascending into that place where there is no death and rebirth. Because when one gets to a certain point, one realizes one doesn't have to be reborn into this physical world in the way that we perceive anymore. One can transcend ordinary reality, go beyond. Yeah, there will be some substance that will fall off in what is perceived of as death. But the major experience is that of beingness, which carries on and doesn't have to get reborn through the cycle of uh, rebirth again, reincarnation again. This is the part that has to be broken. This is the thing that got lost many thousands of years ago in what was termed the fall. People fell from the grace of walking with God day after day after day and knowing that experience through all eternity into an experience of what we think of as life, which is just a very small little blip on the radar screen of life. And there is such a place that is indescribable that has been spoken of as Nirvana, as Heaven, and many other sacred words that can only begin to scratch a little bit of the experience describe just the briefest part of the experience of living in the oneness. And you and all those on earth who are feeling that inner compulsion to move to that place or moving to that place, it's unstoppable for you actually. There's nothing that can stop it. It's inevitable, one might say. And it's not because of anything other than that which has come up through you. In you is the compulsion. And that compulsion will take you to where your heart desires, whatever that is. Whatever that is. So it's good to, again, begin to comprehend some of the reality of what being here is and where here is because we speak of it week after week describing it in different ways and different parts of the process to begin to and it'll take an eternity of eternities to know it all but as one begins to experience it one does come to the point of the realization of what one's truly one's first love is. And then none of the other things really matter. They can come, they can go. The experience can come, the experience can go. The challenges and the joys can come and the challenges and the joys can go. But there is only one first love and when the first love is for this, it never grows. It just winds and finds one's way deeper and deeper and deeper into the heart of the Creator, into the oneness, into bliss. And one gets to choose if one wants to experience bliss. And there have been teachers and saints and holy men and women who have experienced the bliss and come close to describing as best as they can what bliss is. And the experience of the beloved consciousness of the Creator is bliss, of the oneness of it, and knowing that one is deep, deep, deep in the heart of the Creator is bliss. There is nothing else that can even come close to destroying that bliss. 
There's no challenge, there's no circumstance. So all the other things pale in comparison. Why would one want to make something else? The bliss. You just have to follow your bliss. Follow what it is that is in your heart that's percolating. That's coming to the surface. That thing which you will never give up on. Because you love it more dearly. You love it more, more, more than anything else you can be drawn forth from. There are experiences that will that'll come. Men and women and things, experiences to experience. But they won't come close to following the highest bliss that you can experience. And if they come great, then you experience it because that's what the Creator wants you to experience. And if they go great, because that's what the Creator chooses for you to go through experiencing successfully also. So take lightly all the things that you experience as you ride along in the chariot with Krishna, with God itself. Letting God drive the chariot, letting the Creator take you into all the experiences that you experience. And knowing with all certainty, you're with God. <laughs> You're with Krishna, you're with the Creator, you're with Allah, you're with Buddha, whatever you want to call him. You're with the light. You're with Shekinah, evidence of the presence of God within the range of the capacities that you have. Let's go to share in the deeper, deeper understanding of what the range of consciousness is that is bliss. The bliss of being here. I'm deeply thankful to be able to share this with, with each one. So that you know what my bliss is. You know what is the passion in my heart. But through all the experiences, through all the things that come up, through all the challenges, there is only one thing for me. As Francis Horn said, I want one thing. And it's good to be here in that.